In this video, we're going to write the architecture block for our majority circuit. We already have declared our entity here, so now we'll move on to declare our architecture. Architecture block, we start with the keyword architecture, followed by the name of the architecture. In this case, we're going to call it behavioral, and followed by the keyword of, and the name of our entity that we are that the which the architecture is related to, and we end with the keyword is. So this will be the declaration of our architecture. And here I'm going to make a, a pause for a second because the way we write our architecture depends strictly on the way on the information that we have available about our system or the form in which we have that information. In this case, we are presented with the truth table of the circuit so we can use that to our advantage. We don't need to make any calculations or anything else because we already have a description of the behavior in the form of the truth table. All we need to do is figure out a way to translate that into logical uh, expressions or statements that VHDL can understand. So in order to do that um, we are going to come inside our architecture and we are going to go into the declarative part of the architecture, or the statement part, sorry. And here, we are going to declare a process. Now, process are chunks of code that get executed at certain points in in our in 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 the in the in the running of the circuit or in, during the life of the circuit. And these these processes can be triggered by signals. In this case. We can declare. We can say. We can. We can say which which signals the process is sensitive to by wrapping them in parentheses after the keyword process. Then we say begin, and we can start our process. Now here is where we translate the truth table into into a series of logical statements. In this case, an easy way to do this is with the keyword case. So let me just finish this because I want to end it like that. Now the keyword case will take the input and it, when that value has a certain value, so we say, when, so this reads basically when input, when m input is 0, 0, 0, then the output will get a 0. And this is this is coming straight from the truth table. Zero 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 zero. And I can do the exact same thing for all the other ones. So I can just copy and paste this like that. And I can just treat this just like I would a truth table. One one zero is one, 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 and then if there are two or more ones, then it's a one, otherwise it's a zero. And this is pretty much it. We have all eight cases, one for one for each row on our table, and this will, uh, this pretty much describes the entire behavior of our circuit. Now there is one caveat here or one pitfall that we need to always keep in mind when we're working with VHDL we are working with real hardware um, with a hardware description so it's not enough to sit to cover the cases for when the, our values are 1 and 0 we need to take into account other cases because the standard logic value in VHDL can have nine values so whenever our input has any of the other values and this is very convenient that VHDL gives us the keyword others. So when we have any of the other values, we can establish or we can say a case where we are sending every other value to zero. That in that case we end our case, and I believe we have an end or process. So we can end our process here. And then we can end our architecture. Yes. 
there we go and this should give us a fully functional architecture for our majority circuit.